gentlemen and ladies welcome to another video and in this one i want to start talking about hardware so up until this point we'll be talking about the code and how to write your program and i haven't really touched on anything regarding hardware so i presume that you already had hardware but even if you're a bit newer or you have a bit harder, but you want to know a bit about new suggestions or what I use, so you can maybe look into it. So this video is for you. And in the next few videos, I'm going to be talking about more for electronics. So for soldering and actually preparing electronics instead of just connecting the embedded digital world. So let's start with the development board that I always recommend in my videos. So this is the one. This is the F4 Discovery. And it's really great because it has a large chip and it has a lot of pins and only a fraction of them are taken up by the ad added peripherals like the accelerometer, LEDs, DAC, USB and microphone and the user push button. This is great because you can use this for learning and I still use this for learning but you can also use this board for future prototyping and for any new projects. The deal with the discovery board is that they are great for learning but some of them can have so much added peripherals that a lot of pins become unused so you cannot use everything for analog or any digital domains you want. That's why for prototyping if in your dead stage I would suggest nuclear boards which are the white ones and these nuclear boards do a good job of just exposing the pins of the microcontroller and add the necessary external components to make it work. In this case, I have an F7 development board and it has only the Ethernet peripheral and USB in order to actually test the Ethernet peripheral. Other than that, there are no external components connected to the I.O. so you're free to use any pins you want for the design purpose. Next thing are the actual connections. I just bought a fresh new pair of cables for around $12 of eBay. This is my basket that I have until now. So it's rather messy and a lot of wires are taken up or soldered together because I really didn't uh, give it too much care. So I bought a fresh new set for around $12 and it's two sets of each of female to female, male to male and male to female. So about 60 wires per category plus another 30 per category of the 10 centimeter length. If you just want to buy one, just buy the 20 centimeter variant, they're very useful. Do note that these DuPont connectors, which are these rectangle connectors, do not have the connections right at the edge of the connector. You might have noticed that. So for certain reasons, like for these dev boards that have pins on the top, the pins on the top are actually shorter than the pins on the bottom, if you'll focus. And for that reason, those DuPont connectors won't connect to them. And for that reason, if you're really into electronics and in the embedded, I would suggest you pick up a few better ones. So these are the premium ones. These are have uh, a bit thicker wires, but what I actually are just wires with Dupont connectors on the edge with heat shrink. So as you can see, the metal connections goes right at the edge of the actual wire itself. This way, this can connect easily to the shorter top pins of the microcontroller test boards. So about a pack of 20 of these will run you about 10 euros on Farnell, which is quite expensive considering I bought all of this for $12. So I bought 20 of uh, female and 20 of male of two different uh, lengths, so 10 and 20 centimeters. And I also have few with thinner and more flexible wires, also female to female. So I suggest you keep a few of those running around. The next part of the connections is done on the breadboards. So I would suggest you get three different types of breadboards. You get a better one, a good one. You have a lot of cheap and shorter ones that you can place multiple short projects on them and a crappy big one that you're just going to use for soldering, assisting and holding hot components and etc. That's why, because a big good board will be used for bigger and important projects that you want to take care of in development whereas the short ones are for quick prototypes and nasty jobs and just quick actual workaround. So I take good care of my big board and I only use it with uh, properly thin components. I don't use the large components on it in order not to damage the holes. Whether on this one, I'm not really that careful. As you can see right now on this one, I have my uh, test circuit for nonlinear electronics course. It's a buck converter and you can see all these different connections to power supply with this orange, uh, and yellow lines. I also have a blue one and there's a green one somewhere in there. There it is. And that's why I also recommend you pick up a set of jumper wires like this one 
and this go from 2 to 11 and then 30 uh, 40 50 and 60 i believe something like that or maybe uh, 20 30 40 and 50. and these are really useful for making all the short connections on these boards as you can see on this one as, as well I have all these connections over here. And these are really useful because they're low to the profile, uh, so you have lots of space for using the external components like resistors, capacitors, and other components. That's why you don't need to always use male-to-male -male headers like this because they can clutter your actual prototyping board. So use this type of pins for supply pins and short connections. The next part of wire that I want to discuss is this one. This is a RS-232 serial cable. This is very useful because it's almost 2 meter in length, it works with 3.3 volts, so for all the embedded devices, and I have already one connected to my computer at all times, so I can use it as a serial monitor while testing different protocols. And this is really useful to get a proper one with a large length, so you can just connect it to your PC, have it behind your desk, and on your desk available all the time. I would suggest getting an original one if you can, because this one really will work all the time because there used to be some problems with fake ones not working anymore because of a new driver update by the company that makes the original ones. So just suggest if you're able to get an original one and you're gonna have it for a long time. It's just not gonna stop working. Another one that I forgot uh, is actually trivial if you're already soldering and that is the pair of tweezers. So these are the banded type and I would suggest having at least one of these instead of just the straight ones. These are really great, these are from Duratool, from Fornell, and they're about 8 euros. And you can definitely get cheaper ones, but these are very nice, and I really enjoy them, and I only bought them when I uh, found that they used them at work. You can get fake ones, and I had fake ones for one, $1 from China, and I used them for 4 years, and I, then I lost them. They're really great, they're sturdy, they never bend, they're really great. But then I bought another set of fake ones, like $4 for 5 of these, and they're really crap. These bend easily, they cannot hold anything, and I would just avoid them. But you cannot know which fakes are good and which are bad. So I would suggest buy a proper one, and then you take a good care of them, you don't bend them, you don't expose them to large amounts of heat, use them for surface mount soldering and for prototypes, and for everything else you buy a set of lot of fake ones, and then you try and gamble which ones are actually good and which ones are bad. Another fake thing, or just a clone that is very popular, are these logic analyzer that can come up as Sailey clones, but these are very simple logic analyzers with eight channels, and these are very good because you can see the actual digital communication protocols that are happening in your circuit or anything else. You can check your power supply pins, whether they're toggling on and off, you can see whether your I2C, SPI or UART peripheral is behaving the way you intend, and then you can pinpoint whether the problem is in your microcontroller, your peripheral chip, like this one, or your computer code, because you're often gonna be communicating over serial from something like a Python, which I'm gonna do a video in the future, and then you can see whether your Python is not sending the correct data, whether your microcontroller is sending anything at all. So this is a really great tool that you should be using in order to shorten your debug time, because then you're just gonna be pulling your hair, because you don't know whether your actual initialization is correct, your code is correct, or your uh, uh, connections are correct, or even if your chip is dead. So that's why I would buy this, I bought this on Amazon from Europe for 12 euros, but you can probably get it a bit cheaper from China, so just look for basic logic analyzer and it should look something like this small little plastic box. And it's really great, you don't need lots of pins or large frequencies. And the last thing, have lots of USB connections. As you can see, you're gonna be using USB for this, 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 I have a PC, so I have a keyboard, mouse, and a microphone and webcam. So get yourself a powered hub, so this is a USB 2.0, it's a crappy hub, but get yourself a modern 3.0 USB powered hub in order to power all the electronics and not to stress your computer. I would suggest buying a good uh, hub that you can have on your desk for all the connections. And that's about it. That's all I have for today, and in the next video I want to talk to you about more electronics uh, peripherals, so you can use in your workshop for soldering and getting more serious into electronics. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!